Over the weekend, everyone improved a lot in many aspects, including boat handling, upwind boat heel, and priorities around corners. I think that there are a few major areas for improvement around the course, so in this debrief I'm going to focus on highlighting a few key points that I think everyone can work on. First off, I thought that the racing on Saturday was a very good indicator of one of the fleet's biggest weak points, which is prioritizing the correct things after the boat handling. No matter how good your tacks and jibes look, and no matter how quickly you get the kite up, your boat speed around corners will still be bad if you aren't focused on the right things immediately after. Two major problems that I noticed in particular were that teams were not prioritizing full extension on the wire, and that teams were rushing to pass the main sheet back to the crew while sacrificing heel. This jibe looks very good until the end when JP bends in in order to hook in. And in driving force conditions, it's really important to make sure that you're prioritizing full extension out of tags. Here's an example of what it should look like. Again here um, in this set you can see that Dane needs to extend sooner uh, because without extending the kite doesn't really start pulling and the boat doesn't really start going so he kind of squats in on the rail there and doesn't get it going for quite a while. Here again Kyler needs to prioritize keeping the weight up and staying high because when he doesn't, the boats behind him and the boats behind him do, the boats behind him are just going so much faster, it's impossible for him to stay high. So maybe he needs to be hiking there instead of standing in the middle of the boat while he sets. Here Rob and Matt come around the top windward mark and rather than prioritizing proper boat heel, they worry too much about bearing away. The more breeze, this is going to lead to flipping, but since it's a little lighter here, uh, it's just really slow. You can see their rail dig as they try to bear away because they're not flat. Finally, I think this is a good illustration of that boat heel out of your tack. You can see when they tack how much the boat slows down. And that's a combination of both extension and of main sheet trim out of the tack. Remembering to keep that boat nice and flat uh, so that your crew can mess around on the wire and, and get hooked in and spend that extra second that it takes in order to get fully extended before you clip in. And then you do the hand pass afterwards. In general, I was pretty impressed with the boat handling of the fleet as a whole. Teams seem to be confident in maneuvers, however I think that there is lots of room still for improvement, especially among the more experienced teams. As you get better at sailing the boats, it's important to get very picky about the details in order to keep your learning curve steep. So let's walk through the footwork and attack or jibe or set. You can easily remember how footwork should go by remembering front, back, back, front. In these clips, you can see that the front foot is always the first one in, the back foot follows, and goes all the way across the boat. Then I turn backwards, letting my new back foot lead out to the rail, and this time following with my new front foot. This footwork should be the same regardless of the maneuver, so tacks are the same as jibes and sets. The key is here eliminating any extra movements, keeping a wide stance the whole time, and making sure that the move is the same on every maneuver so that it's easy to repeat. As long as you, your move has these components, you can switch it up a little bit, but I would strongly suggest practicing this technique as a starting point. We briefly discussed the basics of downwind asymmetric tactics, but I thought I'd include a good illustration in this debrief to show what it looks like on the water. Here you can see Patrick and Storm come around the mark right behind Quinn and Dane. Both teams are looking to jive to around the coach boat, and when they do,
Quinn and Dane managed to get their bow out enough that if they had had a good jibe, they would have lived. Let's back up just a bit and think about the situation. Both boats knew that they were approaching ley line, and the paths that we eventually saw looked something like this. On these paths, Patrick and Storm leave it up to boat handling to determine who will be the first around the mark. So instead, the conversation should be, when they jibe, we jibe, and the paths should look something more like this. Assuming the boats have equal boat handling now, Patrick and Storm will probably be the first around the mark because they're slightly to windward and, and they can prevent Quinn and Dane from getting their bow out. In this situation, the defense for Quinn and Dane is to throw a jibe very hard and come out at a really hot angle so that it's difficult for Patrick and Storm to match that angle without creating lateral separation. The last thing that I think deserves attention is upwind heel. Like I talked about with many of you guys, it's very important to use your heel to help change modes. Here you can see that Patrick and Storm do a great job of keeping the boat flat or maybe a little bit heel to leeward in the average wind. And when they see a puff forming, they heel slightly to windward so that when the puff hits, they can keep the boat driving forwards in a bow down mode. In this puffy stuff, this is essential in order to keep the boat on its feet. The second part of this is making sure to come back to flat or slight leeward heel before sailing out of the puff. Several times our team struggled to prevent healing to windward, and I think that the solution is preempting the lull with the leeward heel the same way you should be preempting the puff with windward heel. If you guys have any questions, feel free to email me at sbysfheadcoach at gmail.com. I hope this helps. See you guys.